Bleed is not a problem. Fire is not a problem. Explosions? Maybe. But you will survive. And the best of all, this build is a counter to most adrenaline and bulwark users. And of course, this is also something that will work well in PvE. It is a deflector build that turns your agent into a massive tank using old gear pieces and some new talent. It increases survivability, durability, and gives you some damage as well. I call it the undying breath. Most people you see now will be running with adrenaline rush or bulwark builds, which means they will become more tanky and sometimes the fight could last a little bit longer. The other side of their build and their weakness is the fact that they're looking for bonus armor. And because they're looking for that bonus armor, they will always try to get close to you. This is how you set a trap for them. The deflector shield immediately marks the closest enemies to you and make them the target of their own damage. Moving side to side means they will have a hard time hitting you or getting a headshot, so it forces them to aim at your chest. And your chest is where the deflector is. And that, my friends, is checkmate. You have them where you want them. With this setup, you can deflect up to 77% or 80% of incoming damage. If you pair it up with a deflector drone, you can fire back almost every single damage they deal. Because the defender drone will also be covering your weak spot, you have better protection against rushers. At 1.9 million armor with armor regen, you have all the resilience you need to counter bleed and burn effects. And you will also be amplifying your own damage by using Intimidate. This is not a foundry bulwark build. It is more of a retaliation or a response to a lot of those new builds. A counter to the new meta, if you would say. So to make this build, you need three Gilligard pieces, two Golem gear pieces, Emperor's Guard knee pads, Intimidate talent, and an Adrenaline rush on the backpack talent. Any pistol of choice will do. Personally, I am using the skill-based pistol. Deflector shield and deflector drone is also needed. The Gila guard pieces will take place of the mask, chest, and backpack, and this is because they have defensive slots. In these defensive slots, you can place in armor on kill or a disrupt resistance mod. If you decided to go with golden gear pieces on your face mask, backpack, or chest, then you can replace those mods with skill haste mods or something else. As far as attributes go, you want to have armor regen crit chance mods on your pieces. This will give you more survivability and damage. Altogether, you will be getting a maximum of 3% armor regen, a high armor, and a good damage in PvP. The specialization in this case does not matter as much, however, you will notice that I'm using a specialization that benefits my skills. Because the deflection from shield counts as hits, it is also a perfect combo with Kendra's Liberty. But on the other hand, using Future Perfect on a hard-hitting weapon can also be a great one as well. The Future Perfect talent will give you overcharge every 15 seconds you get a kill at tier 6. That overcharge will deflect 100% of the incoming bullets. And if you don't like any of those, you could also use Reformation talent. This is a talent that will repair your skills by 30% if you get a headshot. Farming skill mods have also been quite influential in crafting this build. This is one of those things that you will have to look into if you're trying to replicate or at least use this build as an inspiration. Now we have deflector mods on every single slot on our shield. When you face enemies, bring out your shield first, and if they jam your shields, then bring out your drone. The reason why I'm suggesting using one skill at a time is because if one of them is destroyed, you can bring out the other one. Now, the only way to counter this build is to get headshots with high-powered rifles. So if you're running into people who are using M1As or Diamond Back, then they will likely kill you in two or three shots. So you have to constantly move just to make sure that they don't kill you. Instead of the usual offensive styles, this is a more laid back and defensive build. It is one of those builds that forces players to come to you. And that is the beauty of this build because every time they get close, you're setting them up for their own demise. I've had people talk trash to me in the DZ because they couldn't kill me in three seconds. And I like it. It finally tackles the elite players who gank on everyone in conflict and DZ. Now the average PvP player feels more like a challenge to some of these elite players, 
Once again, this build can be easily countered. You can jam the player. You can do a lot of different things. And if you're facing bulwark users, you can also hit them with explosives because that will also nullify some of their skills or even destroy their armor. So there are ways to counter a lot of these builds in PvP. I see a lot of people calling for nerfs to Foundry Bulwark, but I think it's okay as it is. A lot of us were asking for better TTK, and I think in my opinion, a longer TTK is better, especially in a game like Division 2. Now, I have to admit it as well. Running with shields can be a little bit boring and can also limit the way you move, but it is the most dead gamer approach ever and using the flexor adds a little bit of spice to your life. Now obviously, this gameplay is recorded as a form of demonstration. This is not how I usually play the game. If I record the way I play, you guys will be dizzy just by watching the whole thing. So I don't want you guys to have to go through that. With that said though, do whatever you want to do with this build. Change it however you want. It's all up to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.